Our next inductee earned his living as a chemistry teacher. Hey, that's pretty good. We could get him working on some ice conditions. And from all accounts, his passion was hockey. And he, do you, by the way, do you have a uh, chemistry uh, equation for offense? We could, we could probably use that right about now. And from all accounts, his passion was hockey, and he is most commonly known for his years as coach at St. Louis University High School, although he still probably cannot tell us what a Billiken is. This was quite an accomplishment for someone whose first contact with the sport was actually watching the Blues play their inaugural season in 1967. In 1971, when, Saint, when the high school league was formed, Charles was asked to participate for St. Louis University High School since he had prior coaching experience in water polo. I figured, what the heck? Freeze it, shrink the thing you play with, and it's the same game, right? Charles' teams went on to win the Catholic Schools Tournament in 99 and 2000. They finished second in 2001. He cites other accomplishments as uh, anytime SLU beat the SMET or CBC. Wow. Probably should have. <laughs> That's, those are good accomplishments. Charles credits his friends that he has made, of course, the coaches, players, parents, and administrators who have stayed involved with the love of hockey. Besides coaching, uh, his other accomplishment duties to hockey have been some of the following. Moderator and administrator for the SLU Hockey Club for the past 37 years. High School Hockey Midget States League scheduler and rules committee member since the early 80s. Now that's commitment. And a member of the Moham board and now the Missouri Hockey Inc. board. Please welcome and congratulate Charlie Busenhart. First of all, I'd like to thank members of the selection committee, St. Louis Blues, and you, the hockey community, for considering this honor for me. It's a very humbling experience. I began to wonder why someone would even consider this. You know, I'm a member of this, of the, uh, actually the chairman of the scheduling committee, and a member of the rules committee for a long, long time. I'm sure that many of you present in this room have not always uh, praised my name. <laughs> in fact, I think it might be safe to say 50% of you uh, hated, disliked, or cursed me for a short period of time each year after you received your schedule. <laughs> the other 50% only hated me 50% of the time. That only leaves a few could have, who have said complimentary things to me. I just hope that my service in those areas were appreciated by enough people to let me know that you appreciate us, that is, mid-states, those of us that do the administrative work, even though we do make you mad sometimes. Another thing that's somewhat disconcerting is uh, we're not one of the major winning teams in this league. But at least I haven't won enough to have enough people here dislike St. Louis U High for beating them. <laughs> I'd like to share a couple of things with you about hockey. I never played a single game of hockey. It's obvious if you saw me coaching early in, the, early in, the, in my career, I stood on the side of the I didn't even put on the skates. I was standing in the bench working with a couple of other guys who were working with our first hockey team. We had a few guys that could skate. A couple of them are here present tonight. We also had a bunch of guys who couldn't skate. We were ranked in the first league of eight teams. We were going to finish last. I do remember one game very vividly. We were playing at Creef Corps before it had a roof. So you had to rush from school at 3.30 in the afternoon to be there at 4 to play the game. We were playing to Smet. And Womanshauser was the referee that night, for those of you who happen to remember Womanshauser. And we were supposed to lose that game. Womanshauser was completely out of place on a goal that we scored, that Eddie, we scored one, and oh my God, the crowd went crazy. We're standing around that uh, cyclone fence, if those of you who remember that place. And later in the game, when it got really dark, we work extremely hard, get good grades, and go on to play in, in college at college levels. 
those are guys that I really enjoy having being part of my team. When I got nominated for this award, a number of things on emails, I got things from uh, letters, emails, whatever you want to call them anymore, from guys who I had disciplined. Jack Bean will remember this. One time, he's doing the color commentator at Queenie Rink. And I had a very, uh, uh, let's say, disruptive group of guys in 1995. They played the game well, but they really had trash mouths. They spent so much time in the penalty box that it was an interesting situation that we couldn't control. I couldn't gain control of them. They they were really good hockey players, and uh, we tried some creative discipline for them one night. We're at the Queenie Rink. We're playing somebody who's much better than we are, and I make my six guys who got suspended the previous game dress in their complete uniforms without their skates, climb up into the stands, and sit there and watch the game for the first period. I wasn't stupid. I was going to let them play the second and third period. I wasn't going to lose the game. <laughs> At the end of this first period, oh no, as I'm sitting up the stands, Jack comes over and says, Coach, why are these guys up here in the stands? And he's interviewing me for this TV thing, and I I said, Jack, they've been bad boys. <laughs> they need to suffer a little bit. So what happens? We get through the first period. We're actually tied or winning by one. My assistant coach, since I was suspended also because that was the 15 penalty rule, my assistant coach says, they get down there and he says to them, guys, we're winning without you. Sit here and watch the next period. <laughs> Heart attack heaven is occurring for me at that point in time because I have a feeling we're going to lose that game. We actually end up winning it, and I think they got to play the last part of the game. My whole point is sometimes you have to do ridiculous things to make a point with kids, and each of us have done our creative disciplines in many different ways, and they learn, you learn, and sometimes you have a little bit of fun with those unique disciplines. Many people have given, I consider myself one of those people that have given others an opportunity to play a game that they love. That's my joy as the administrator part of the league. It's also my joy as a coach. The fun thing is that if you've never played the game, you really don't appreciate it as much as those who have. So what you do is you gather together a bunch of guys who know hockey and can teach guys how to play the game. And the one thing that I really like is the thing that Bill Selman told me a long time ago, or told my players a long time ago at one of the banquets. There are people who have given you the opportunity to play the game that you love. The best way to show your appreciation for them and the game is to give something back. Many of my players have coached or refereed or helped out as parents just giving something back to this wonderful game. That is probably one of the most important things that I really appreciate are those young men who've come back and made my life as a coach a very, very rewarding thing. Again, I'd like to express my appreciation to the selection committee, the Blues, and those tonight who have shared this experience of hockey and a sincere congratulations that have been given to me. But there is one person that I must especially thank, my wife Sally, for going through these 37 years with all the victories and all the defeats and all the dedications and arguments that she's given to hockey over the way the game should be played and the way the game should be refereed. Thank you very much. Thank all of you.